everything all set up. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Thanks for being here. I think this is the most on time I've ever been, and I'm so thrilled with myself. Um, we're currently in, I'm honestly shocked because the last like week, like, no, let's be honest, like month has been a battle of three-year-old will in order to see like how bad time can go. Cause you know, after Avery's 30, then we were like, oh my gosh, like I'll sleep in your bed with you, which is a terrible habit to start because then bedtime became a nightmare. And that's where we are. I've been like setting timers. She sets a timer on my Apple watch. And that's when I know like I have to go check on her and the increments get longer. I'm like, this reminds me of when you were a newborn, but hi everybody who's here. If you can't hear me, someone let me know, but I'm just gonna, I always ask that and everyone's like, yes, we can hear you. So let's just go with the assumption that you can hear me. I hope you guys are all doing well. I will be drinking coffee throughout this. So I hope it doesn't make any loud slurpy noises. Um, but I... I need coffee. I've been trying to like cut down on how much caffeine uh, because anxiety, but also I'm realizing that that's not conducive to life. So we're going to go up. You also might hear some mechanical type noises. I guess that's the best way to describe it in the background. Joe is building a computer like right behind the camera. So uh, that's what that is. <laughs> He's making like a, I thought you can only go to the store and like buy a computer, but he has ordered like a lot of parts on the internet and is constructing it himself. So I was like, go you. <laughs> Good job. Way to go. All right. So I am going to just start at the top and I'm going to go through as many questions as I can. Um, if I don't get to your comment or your question, it's not because I hate you. It's because I accidentally didn't see it or we just ran out of time. So all right, Paige, I think my son, um, oh, and also I'm going to, I'll read all the questions so you guys know if you're watching on the replay, like what is actually being asked. And then in the time, in the description bar box, there'll be timestamps of everything. So you can go and if you're just looking for like a specific question, you can just go down there and hop around to whatever question you guys want to see. But obviously you should just hang out for the whole time because we have fun. <laughs> okay, Paige. Um, I think my son can feel it's going to be a nurse Liz live session because he refuses to go to sleep. I hope you're here. Let's see how that goes. I think maybe he was just channeling the same energy that Avery was channeling because it's intense and really powerful. Hi, Amber. She said she was excited for this. Thanks. Livy B. I love these live streams. Just a little update for me. I got into nursing school. Oh, congratulations. That's super exciting. It is a competitive world out there. I don't remember it being, it was, it might've been just as competitive. I mean, I went to nursing school like 10 years ago. Don't think about it. <laughs> don't think about it is the truth. Um, and I don't know if like the internet wasn't, I mean, obviously the internet existed, but there was social media wasn't as big. So there wasn't all this like knowledge of like how hard it was to get in. It was kind of just like you were in your own little bubble. So I just didn't even think about it. People all the time are like, you know, like, were you stressed about applying? I was like, I didn't even like I just, I just didn't even, I thought I didn't think about it that much. I was like, if I get in, I get in. If I don't, I don't. But there was no like Instagram to be like, oh, I'm sad. I didn't make it. And look at all these people who did. But that was a tangent. I'm proud of you. Good job on making it into nursing school. Because that is no small feat these days. Not like it was back in my day. <laughs> Okay. Um, also, I just got officially diagnosed with ICR. Oh, ICR. Oh, idiopathic condylar reabsorption um, is what that stands for. Do you keep an eye out for this in your young female patients? To be honest, no, because I learned it was a thing about 20 seconds ago when I read it off of the screen. So I will have to look up what that is later. It doesn't sound fun. And I'm sorry. I hope that gave you some answers. But um, no, I, I do not know what that is. So it is not something I typically look out for, but I probably should. And maybe I will after today. Amber. Oh, good. You guys are congratulating each other. You guys are the best. Uh, Priscilla said, I'm a junior in high school and I'm thinking about becoming a nurse. Any advice? Yes. So I'm going to be making a whole video about this. Um, and it's going to be, it'll be coming out, but it's not out yet. So I'll just give you the cliff notes version. <laughs> then maybe you won't even have to watch that. Basically focus on science as much as you can, because you're going to have to retake those science and classes when you get into college for nursing. So you'll have to do like microbiology and organic, like chemistry. Maybe you won't have to do organic. My school made me do organic chemistry, which seemed like really rude. Um, biochemistry, all of those. And you're going to, so the better the foundation your science is, 
the easier that's going to be then. Um, if they offer statistics, take that because you will have to take statistics is in nursing school or as a prereq. So I would say if they offer like AP bio or AP chem, anything you can get in that realm is going to be really, really helpful for you. And then some kind of volunteering that shows that you like people, you know what I mean? Like don't, if you have an option between volunteering at a senior center versus, I don't know, cleaning up trash on the side of the road, pick the senior center one. And then you can talk about, you know, how you like to talk with people and do all of those things. Um, so that's kind of my biggest recommendations for that science statistics. Don't worry about, um, I wouldn't super stress like calculus or anything like that. Cause you don't need to know calculus for nursing school. Thank you goodness that class almost killed me <laughs> I had to take it because I was originally pre-med and um yeah that was a disaster Paige oh good Paige you are here um good she was agreeing that a good foundation in science in high school and then trying to get an insider look at what nurses do yeah if you can like shadow as a CNA or if you could become a CNA or anything like that in high school I mean that'll give you a great idea if that's kind of the road you want to go Princella said, okay. Oh, she, she was volunteering at a hospital, but due to COVID, they're currently not going there. Yeah, that makes it a little bit challenging. Think about those other places. Even if you are, mm, COVID does make it hard. You could reach out to local like senior centers and see if you could coordinate like a an event virtually, you know what I mean? One of the big events that I did was we hosted a dance, me and uh, a friend of mine, we hosted a dance for seniors through the local senior center. And we made it in the era of, I forget what it was, it was whatever the era would have been that the average age of the people that were going were in their early 20s. Um, so I forget, I think it was like, I don't even remember what era it was, but that's what we did. So it wasn't medically related, but we volunteered at this place every week. And then that was our like end of the like semester or whatever it was thing that we did. And it was really fun. They were really, really cute. Um, let me see. Damaris. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that right. I'm a nursing student in my third semester. Almost there. You are almost there. Keep going. I enjoy watching your videos. Oh, thank you. That was kind. All right, PT Para, what are some of the, what are some of Piper's favorite toys and birthday presents? My niece is turning one and I'm looking for a fun gift. I already got her some fun clothes and shoes and was looking for a toy type of gift. So Piper loves that bicycle thing. Um, I, if you go to her one-year-old birthday thing, I think I have it linked there, but it's any kind of like little trike or bicycle. If you look up baby bike is what it comes up as. So it's not the one that Avery has where it's like a real bike. This one has like four wheels. You can't knock it over. She really loves scooching around on that. She loves Joe. What else does Piper really like? Anything that makes um, like noise. Um, like a, she has like this remote control, like a fake toy remote and a controller. We're not usually big into like buying all the, like, the plastic loud noise, but she loves those two things. She loves books that and have magnetiles. She, she has like magnet tiles, but that's like weird for a one year old to like, like pull them apart and like put them together. And yeah. I guess it's kind of weird. Yeah. I would. Yeah. <laughs> the magnet. She likes them. She likes a lot of Avery's toys and Avery's three. Um, she really doesn't play with a lot of baby toys because she has Avery's toys. So she has like no interest in the baby toys, but she also really likes books that have texture. So like it either like fur or we found one that has like sequins and she can play with that with her finger or like different silicone textures. Cause at that age, they're super into like, you know, textures and like touching all of that. But those would probably be my top three of Piper's favorite things. But really in reality, it's just anything that she shouldn't be doing. Her real actual favorite toy, if we're being totally honest, are the granola bars that she can get to under the island because she can, we don't, baby proof our kitchen with like locks and stuff I just put everything I'm fine with the girls getting into into the lower cabinets so her favorite what you can find her doing most of the time is going through and she pulls out all the granola bars out of the snack bin and then she'll pull out all the Tupperware and then she'll go over and go under the sink and she'll pull out all like the sponges and the gloves and like everything under there. And then I put it away and then we just repeat. So you could just get her like um, sponges and granola bars and a bucket and the child will have a wonderful time. Um, Brooke said, I'm in fundamentals and I'm struggling with the style of the exams. 
when I hear people say all of the answers are correct, I didn't really understand what they were saying, but now I do and I'm struggling. Yeah, that is, I don't really have any advice there other than like, it does get easier. You can start to see more patterns the more you take those types of tests. But nursing school exams are the absolute worst. Cause like you said, it'll be like, choose all that apply. So it's not even like you can do like an ABC, you know what I mean? Where you can kind of eliminate things. It is just, it's brutal. Um, and I think they do that. I think because the NCLEX can be like that. At least that's when I took it. They had a lot of questions that were like that. <sighs> I promise you get a little bit more used to it, but they're just evil. Nursing school exams are unlike any other type of exam. And I always, I feel like it did, you did get more used to taking them. And the first exam of the semester, just don't even pay attention to it. I mean, it'll be there, but you really have to take that first test and go into it as more of a learning experience. Like I'm just going to go and see what this teacher, like how they question things and how they do things. Oh, that first exam is just hard. So I am sorry. You were having a hard time. I also had a hard time. I did not do the best in school. Um, so I am right there with you. And that I was that person when everyone else was like, Oh my gosh, I failed. I'm like, no friend. Like I failed like with an F I was going to make an F. And then I was like, but you weren't like that before in other. No, but I was not a like, oh my gosh, I actually failed in um, like really school student. before that. I was a really good, I was a pretty good student. I also, yeah. I mean, I study, I had to study, but nursing school, I definitely did a lot worse in for more effort. If that makes sense. Like I really had to bust my butt to like pass. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was also, I'm really glad that the age of the internet wasn't around really like in that way with like social media, because I would have just cried in my room when everyone's posting those like on their Instagram, like, Oh, I got like another all a semester. <laughs> I don't think I've ever gotten all a's in my entire life ever, but certainly not in nursing school. <laughs> so I would have been like, that would just make, have made me sad. So when I see those, um, in case you wanted to know a random pet peeve of mine, <laughs> that's one. I mean, it, it's totally fine if you do, cause you should be proud, but as a, not a student that you made me sad. Um, Alana said, I'm a junior in high school and want to go into nursing school. Do you have any tips for qualities to look for in a nursing school? So things you most want in a nursing school is, um, is the school accredited? You want them to be accredited like nationally. A, A, I forget the credentials, but if you look up like nursing national credential, you want them to have that because that means that you can go um, to a different school like later, either not really with transferring, I guess it would work with transferring, but say you wanted to go to grad school, your undergrad needs to be accredited by the AANCE. I think I'm, that's probably not right. Don't look that up. Um, it needs to be accredited. So they'll say, yes, we'll take those credits. There are some programs are only accredited by a different agency, like within the state. And that's fine as long as you stay within that state. But if you ever move, then you're kind of in trouble and it can get weird with like boards of nursing. So I would look for accreditation pass rates. So how many people start the program? How many people get out? You know, if the program starts with 60 people and 20 people are graduating, what is happening in between there? And then NCLEX pass rates. That's the next biggest thing. And then you can get a hold of anyone, like join a Facebook group of local nurses or anything. If you can ask just like what the reputation is of the school, because in my experience, in most areas, there's always that one school that everyone's like, ooh, like all of these are great. And um, that one is not. And it is almost always um, not the community college. I have honestly never heard of a community college not having a phenomenal program. I feel like those programs are actually way more competitive sometimes than BSN programs for an ADN because so many more people, because they're affordable. So everyone wants to go to them and they're usually cutthroat. They're like, oh, you didn't do well in this. Like you're gone. Um, so Delta. I was, what? Delta. Yeah, Dell Tech was like, Del so as Joe was saying, Dell Tech, I went to a school in Delaware and the hospital by us, even though it was magnet, would rather hire a student from the community college. And I'm laughing only because I paid so much money to go to University of Delaware and you could have gone, they took students that went to the community college and they would pay for them to then get their bachelor degree and would rather hire them instead of us. <laughs> I was like, oh, oops. My school was good, but theirs was like nominal. So, um, I guess that was my long-winded way of saying pass rates. Yeah. And class pass rates, are they accredited? What's their reputation and how many people make it through the program? 
And how expensive is it? You know what I mean? Like you, if, even though school matters, it doesn't matter like a ton. You know what I mean? You want to find the one school that really stinks and everyone's like, oh, you went there. Um, but you don't need to go to like the fanciest best school. You know what I mean? Because it, it, you just don't like you need to get your registered nurse license and then move on. Um, hi, Joylene. All right. Let me scroll down and see. Oh, see, I did it again. I scrolled way too far. And this is when I lose myself. <laughs> and I try to go back and it, it doesn't go well. Should I? Oh, okay. Good. I did. Oh, I'm hitting buttons and it's not working well. Um, <laughs> Joe's laughing at me. <laughs> it's like, how are you allowed to be on the internet? Um, let me see. Damaris said NCLEX tips or study materials to pass the NCLEX. So I have a whole video on that and I will leave a link in the description box to the whole thing. But my biggest thing, I think I didn't have it when I went to school, but UWorld seems awesome if you can swing that. It does look expensive, but you could also just do a review book and read every, do all the questions and read every single explanation. What's it called? Like justification in the back of the book. Even if you get it right, just read through all of them. That's all I did. I did one review book. I didn't even like, probably buy it. I'm the reason why Borders went out of business because I just sat in their aisle and read it. And, I did buy a copy from them. Um, but just read through the whole thing. Rationales. That's the word I was looking for. Read through all of the rationales and um, you'll be fine. You know, another thing that pre-internet, I didn't even know I was supposed to stress about it that much. I was just like, I'm just going to read this book. And then I take it. I read it in four days. You stressed a ton. It was a really stressful, like four days. But now people study for like weeks. <laughs> Joe's scarred from nursing school. Um, I didn't say I didn't stress. I said I didn't study until four days before. Not stressing is not anything. Um, how Juliet Henry said, hi, how long did you decide? Hello. How long did you, how did you decide to become an FNP? Um, how did you decide to become an FNP and having anxiety? Um, I don't know the last part. I haven't had anxiety until like eight. Well, I've had it for like three, probably two or three months now. Um, but before that was never a problem. Um, let me see how did I decide to become an FMP? I was working as a med surge nurse on a GI liver kidney ish type floor. And everybody kept coming in with horrible complications of their chronic illnesses that they didn't understand. And I was like, well, I didn't know and tell you about this. <laughs> they, they just had no knowledge of their disease processes or what like diabetes was or what cholesterol was or, you know, any of these things. And they, the theme I just kept seeing was they were like, I just don't even understand what this even is. So like, why did my toe fall off? And I was like, that's sad. So I decided at that point that I wanted to eventually go back and be someone in the primary care setting and catch that at the beginning, when you could educate them about like their disease process and all of that, if they wanted to learn about it. And um, yeah, that's, that's how I decided. So I knew I feel really lucky because I knew right away, it wasn't like, oh, I want to become an NP, what type should I be? Mine was like, I want to do this. Like I had the end job in, in sight. So that's kind of, that made my, the rest of my path really easy. I know it's not that easy for a lot of people because a lot of people are like, oh, I'd like to be a, like, I'd like to go to NP school and be a provider. And then they have to pick. And that just seems overwhelming to me. And I'm sorry if you have to do that because I'm like, how do you choose? How do you even, how do you choose? Um, but that's also a reason I'm a huge fan of going and getting some experience because I never in a million years would have thought that this is what I would be doing. If you had asked me like as a nurse, new nurse, like, what do you think you'll be doing? I would have told you, I'm like, probably going to work in the NICU. If I did anything, I would be a neonatal MP. Um, like that would have been the plan. And now I'm really glad that wasn't the plan because that's, I don't, I wouldn't have liked that. I wanted to get out of the hospital. So, um, going out and just kind of getting your feet wet and seeing what, you like and don't like it's a good plan. um southern heat candle company oh yay i'm just in time hello welcome hi alina um damara said is there an np for nicu or pediatrics specifically yes yeah, so there's a neonatal there's both there's a if you want to work in the nicu usually you have to be a neonatal um nurse practitioner. And then there's also a pediatric nurse practitioners. So there's pediatric acute care and pediatric primary care nurse practitioners. Acute care usually works in the hospital and primary care usually works in outpatient and then outpatient clinics. Um, but those are the 
the main types. And then a family nurse practitioner can see kids and adults. Um, let me see which department, um, Jade said, I just got my math homework done in time so I could watch this. Well done. That's impressive. Alina King, which department should I shadow at to have a good introduction to nursing? Um, really any, I mean, it'll give you like med surge would give you an idea of like the absolute everything, but I would say usually shadowing is fairly competitive. So whatever you can get into, you'll at least get an idea. You know what I mean? Um, but med surge would certainly give you a eyes wide open view, or if you think you want to do, I don't know if they let people shadow in the ICU. Um, if they let you shadow in the ICU and that's what you think you might want to do, that's a very different beast. You know, it's, um, it's very different <laughs> in the ICU. Everything is like a little bit more um, intubated. Uh, so it's just the tasks are a little like things are just different. So if you, you could always try shadowing in both and then kind of seeing nursing school also expose you to both. But um, med surge would certainly let you know, like, <laughs> this kind of is crazy. It's, it's going to get and you could decide like, yeah or no. Um, hi, Bethany. Let me see. Beth Odette said, yes, I made the mistake and it took years to break the habit of sleeping in their bed with them because then they just want that all the time. Um, I'm telling myself it's worth it. I'm like, it's worth all the screaming at nighttime to not have this forever. And then it's kind of hard because you do want to snuggle them in bed because the time that you feel the most affectionate for your child is once they're asleep and they're laying there and you're like, oh my gosh, like we have been fighting literally all day and now suddenly you're asleep. And I'm like, I just want to lay here and snuggle you <laughs> just laughing because you know, it's true. Um, so it's hard because you do want to lay there and just be like, oh my gosh, like, I just want to snuggle you poor, sweet, beautiful thing. Um, and then, yeah. And then you don't really sleep well. And then they're elbowing you in the face and you remember that like, you didn't necessarily think of them that way a few hours ago and you want to go back to your bed, but then they start screaming at you. And then you really remember that, um, this isn't happening and it's a vicious cycle because they eventually fall asleep and you're like, oh, you're so cute. Oh, <laughs> Um, Emma Ferguson said, any advice for starting an accelerated BSN program? I just got accepted today and we'll start in January. Congratulations. Um, lots of people getting accepted to nursing school. That's exciting. Hold on. I need coffee. Oh, it's still like a little bit too hot. A little bit too hot. Um, that's my pre-workout. I'll go work out after this. I'll chug it. It'll be a little bit colder. I'm going to have a creamer. That's why it's hotter. You didn't give me, oh, you're weaning me off of creamer. I've had that over like the past couple of weeks. I've noticed it doesn't taste as good. Uh, Joe kindly made my coffee. So thanks, Joe. Um, but he, so this is a tangent. I promise I'll answer your question. Um, when Joe and I first got together, he didn't really um, drink coffee. Did you drink coffee at all? No. Not at all. I mean, I don't know how you become 21 years old without having drank coffee, but he made it. And um so I was like addicted since, I don't know, I was eight or something like very young. I remember drinking coffee when I was in fourth grade, um, but I got him hooked on it. And he obviously as a new coffee drinker, mostly you drink sugar and creamer with a little bit of coffee, but over the years, and I used to be much more like dangerously restrictive, probably not like um, I was much more restrictive with what I ate. And I was very like, I had a very negative mindset around like calories and everything. So I was very... I would barely use any and mine's gone the opposite way where now I'm just like, just keep pouring the creamer. And Joe over the last 10 years has like, now he drinks black coffee. Um, and he's trying to get me to drink black coffee and it's not working. So in my coffee, which is probably why it's scalding hot is because there's not enough delicious coffee made in it. So essentially this is your fault, Joe. Anyway, but that's the butter cookie from Aldi. Is it? You need a lot of Aldi. Aldi creamer is really good, but you need a lot of Aldi creamer to get the flavor level there. I'm not weak. I just no, have. It is weak. Not oh, weak. yeah, it's weak. <laughs> You're saying I'm weak. I'm like, no, I just like sugar. Okay. Want more? Do I want more creamer in it? Yeah. That would be wonderful. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Joe should be here for all of these. It's been an interesting commentary. Let me know if you ever want Joe to do one of these lives with me. I can, I can shut up. No, it's funny. Let me know if you ever want Joe to do one of these lives with me. That would be interesting. Um, and really funny. We were thinking of, this is going into a lot of side tangents. I'm sorry. Doing a mini series either on YouTube or on, um, 
Instagram <laughs> of responding to watching Disney movies. I don't know how I would do that because I feel like I would get copyrighted so fast, but it is hilarious to watch you um disney movies with joe because he's so cynical about them he's like well this is like insanity um and that would be a good time for all or at least it would be a good time for me so let me know um accelerated nursing programs wow i went on a lot of tangents there accelerated nursing programs are a lot so you're just going they're totally tackable and i did one you can do one i promise if i'm the type of student i am and i did it you can do it um but you're going to want to be really organized and you're only going to want to look at like a week or so at a time. Like when you originally start your semester, you'll want to plan the whole thing out and have, you know, like everything going into like, so you know when your tests and everything are, and then you're going to want to kind of look at your week. But most of the time you're just going to look like want to look at honestly the next day or two, because otherwise it's going to be too overwhelming and you're not like this, but I get paralyzed when I get that overwhelmed. I'm like, I can't do this. And so I do much better if I'm just being at like a bite-sized piece. Like I can't write six research papers this semester and take 15 tests, but I can take one test this week. Thank you. Um, let's try it. Oh, that's so much better. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The butter cookie from Aldi creamer. You have to use a lot of it, but it's fine. It's fine. That's why we're going to go ride the Peloton later. Um, but yeah, you can do like bite-sized things. You can do one day at a time. You can do one test this week. Like if you're in that mentality and like one paper, also be very good about planning. This is something that like I really struggled with because I am such a procrastinator, but you, it really taught me um, how to start looking like you can't write the paper the night before. Um you know, especially for your really long ones, for your short ones, you totally can, that's fine. But when you're starting to write these like 10, 15 page papers, that's really hard to pull off in one night. Having been a person who's done that, like that's just miserable. So time management, having a really good planner. And then um, that's, that's pretty much it. And then just know that it, it's a really hard 18 months or however long your program is, and then it's done. So like you can do, yeah, you might not have a like, um, it depends on if you have a job too. Um, I had a job, so I had zero, like literally zero. <laughs> I did nothing. Um, but if you don't have a job, like those people had some free time, but no matter what, like it's a short period of time, you can do anything really, that's really, really hard for a short period of time, knowing that it's going to end. So it's just like going into work. Sometimes you're like, I can do anything for 12 hours. I can do anything for 12 hours. And you just have to keep repeating to yourself that. I had fun memories of you studying like in my second section at work. I would go into Chili's. Joe said he has fond memories of me studying when it I would. Like um, when was no, but he, so we both worked at Chili's and um, sometimes I was off and he was working and we never saw each other. So how we would hang out is I would go and there was like, you know, go on, it was a weeknight. So the restaurant wasn't very busy and I would just sit at a table the whole night and order like bottomless soup and salad and eat my weight in chips and soup. And, um, I would just study in his section the whole night and that's how we hung out. <laughs> so that was fun. Um, <laughs> that was a really long reply to that one question. Sorry. I'm not going to get to all of these and I'm really sorry. Christina Jolie said, hi, Liz. I'm just confirming. I'm still here. I'm the human who choked on a peanut m, &M when your child ate a toenail. I'm really glad you're doing okay. <laughs> What? Oh, Joe didn't know Piper ate a toenail. Joe, Gross. yeah, Piper ate several toenails. Um, I got so many messages about that yesterday. I'm really glad you're okay. Of people being like, I choked on my dinner when I saw this. So I posted this Instagram story of um, grooming Holly. And I always talk about the girls in my Instagram stories as like my assistants or whatever. So I was talking about how like Avery was my groomer's assistant. And these were the tasks that she was doing. And Piper was dismissed from her assistant groomer position when she ate the client's toenails. And I got got a ton of people saying that they choked when they read that and I was like oh my gosh I'm so sorry <laughs> like I know when she went back for seconds she was like all about those toenails and then Joe came and grabbed her it's a wonderful thing about Joe working from home because of uh the Rona is that he can Piper's so jolly you can just kind of like toss her upstairs to Joe and like she'll just hang out and try to find other things to die on upstairs um let me see. Grace said, um, hi, Liz, will you explain how nurse practitioners can open their own private practice? So essentially, no. <laughs> um, I don't know a lot about that at all. Um, I know that you like, 
in states where you are not, in states where you're independently practicing, like if you have independent authority. So some states nurse practitioners can practice under their own license and other states you have to be affiliated with a physician. I believe, like I said, I don't know anything about this because that doesn't interest me personally at all because I'm too, I don't want to work that much. Um, in states where you can like be under your own scope, like you do your own thing and you don't need anyone attached. I think you can own your own thing and just like, you know, apply to the board of whatever. Obviously I know a lot about this and um, do your thing because then you, you don't need to affiliate yourself with anyone. I think in states where you have to have a physician associated with you, I think they have to own 51% of the practice. They don't have to technically be present, but depending on the state's rules, like every state is different for their rules, they would have to sign off on the required number of charts in order to be a collaborating physician, even if they were never on location. And there's usually there's usually these physicians that, um, at least this is what I've heard, have a few um, advanced practice providers under them, and a lot of them have their own practices. And you, I think physicians, depending on the state, can have like four or so like of these, and you pay them as the nurse practitioner a fee for them to be your overseer, even though they really don't do a lot. Um, or like anything is what I've kind of heard. <laughs> um, so you just pay them a ton of money and they own half the practice and then you get to do your own thing is essentially what I believe it to be. But I don't really know anything about that at all because I don't want to do that. So I have no help there. <laughs> Didn't stop me from talking about it though. Um, Padley, Patty, Patley. Patty, can you give me some insight into how to switch RN licensure between states? Oh, show. Sure. So I have done this many times. Essentially, what you need to do is you need to go onto the Board of Nursing uh, website for the state you want to move to, and it will. You are going to ask it to. Um, you'll go under like the application to apply for a nursing license, and you, as long as you have an active nursing license in your state, it's going to be called um, apply for licensure by endorsement. And you can fill that out. You'll fill out the form. It will tell you what you need. You usually need to go get fingerprinted in the new state that you are moving to, unless your states in a lot of states have like a national, they're hooked into some national system where you can just go to your police department or wherever you get fin fingerprinted by you. Mine's always been at police departments and it joins some national registry, which is perfect. Michigan didn't do that because they were like archaic. And they, when I applied for my Michigan board of nursing license, it was in paper, like they didn't have a website. <laughs> so yikes, but it's called licensure by endorsement. You pretty much just have to get a, um, you have to verify, like prove to them that you have a license. They request something from the state that you work at. You have to prove that you haven't had any marks against your record. And then you pay them a lot of money and then do whatever else they ask you to. Like if they want you to pass another drug test or do whatever they want you to do. Um, and then you're done. And it's honestly really, it's not that bad. Honestly, I've done it a couple of times and it hasn't been like, it's a lot of paperwork and it can be kind of expensive, but it's usually not too bad. And if you're in a compact state, it's even easier. Um, I don't know a lot about compact states because I don't think I live in one. I might, I don't even know, but that makes it even easier because then your license just transfers. Hi, Alberta. I hope you're doing okay and that your week at work was okay. Oh, um, Alberta just started a new job as a nurse practitioner. Yay, Alberta. Kathia said tips for finding preceptors in FNP school. Oh, friend. Um, so I do have a video on this. If you search nurse Liz and then find like NP preceptors, this is so hard. Um, so hard. And I really feel bad that you have to find your own. Um, if you guys are looking into NP school, I cannot encourage you enough to go to a school that finds your preceptors for you if you can, because that is, it's the most difficult part of NP school is finding preceptors. Um, my school found them for me. I had to find a couple of mine they because, really, well, I mean, they couldn't hold me back if they couldn't find me one. So I found a few of mine. They did give me like, um, they were required to find mine essentially. So I, I helped them sometimes because it didn't always go as we had hoped, but, um, and then they tried to put me in like a jail when I was really, really pregnant. And I was like, Oh, maybe not. Um, <laughs> Oh, but um, LinkedIn 
would probably be one of my big ones. Go on LinkedIn and see if you can just like, you know, shoot out some messages to people who work in areas near you and say like, you know, would you be willing to take a student? If you know what your school offers, that's helpful. Um, you'll want to know when you're reaching out to all these people. Um, if they, you know, do they offer, what is your school offering? If they offer anything, do they offer some CE, like some other kind of like CEU bundle in addition to the hours that they're going to get from um, working with you? Do they offer access to like any websites or any journals? Do they, um, you'll want to know like in your message, you know, this is how many hours I need. This is what we're kind of learning about. But finding preceptors is so hard and I am just sorry, but you kind of just have to spam the whole world and then utilize your own network. So like your own doctor's office, which is really awkward, but that is how I ended up, um, getting one of my things was like, I asked my, <laughs> I asked my midwife if she knew anyone and she hooked me up with someone that she knew who was also a midwife. And that's how I got my women's health thing. So like, you know, next time you're in there having your pap smear, you are like, Oh, Hey, um, by the way, like, do you, do you know where I could go? Some, do you know some, how I could learn how to do this, what you're doing here? Um, and ask your kids, if you have kids, ask your pediatrician, ask your family medicine provider, like your family provider, you know, you just gotta, you kind of have to lose all self-respect to be totally honest. And I email a bajillion people and I'm really sorry. And I hope you find some wonderful ones. Um, Southern Heat Candles said, so cool. What can't Joe do? Dishes. <laughs> oh, the dishwasher's right there. Like put the dishes way better about that. in the dishwasher you have been doing better about that joe does a lot i'm really grateful i have a joe and if you ever die i'm just screwed because i don't know how to do anything like literally problem, anything <laughs> i keep the children alive and joe keeps the house running <laughs> sounds like a joe problem <laughs> i have no idea oh um patty said i'm graduating in 10 months and i'm concerned about long wait times for california sponsorship I don't know what that means. Um, better to get licensed in another state that's less impacted and then switch, or would that be too expensive? If you want to work in California, I would probably just wait, but I don't know. I have not, I don't have, I grew up in California, but I have no nursing experience there. Um, but that seems like it would, I would probably just wait. Is like sponsorship when you're licensed posted? Um, but I would probably just apply to California and then wait. If you leave California, you're probably not going back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Sophia said, hi, Liz, is Piper still doing well at walking? Yes. Um, she two days ago went from, so she is mm, mm, thir <laughs> 13 months old. So she's, yeah, like just 13 months old. And she went two days ago from like pretty much crawling like 80, you know, 75, 80% of the time. And then woke up two days ago and was like, I just walk now. And she walks like all the time, very confidently, very different. Avery was like, so hesitant when she was a baby, you know, she would take some steps and like one or two and then stop. And then when, even when she walked, it took her a long time to gain confidence. And Piper walks like she just owns the place. She just like sticks her little chest out and is like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> You're awesome. Um, Haley said and punched to be able pump pumped, not punched to be able to watch a live. Oh, well, thanks for being here. Um, I've been watching your videos for a hot minute. Thanks friend. And now I'm applying to nursing school this year and I am heavily considering going to be an FMP. That's awesome. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, how Jaden said, how much, how much did you make as a new FNP versus now the exact same amount? Um, I haven't, I should probably, so learn from my mistake, friends. If when you are doing your original hiring, um, ask for periodic, like every six months, um, like in your contract or whatever, every six months, ask for it to be specified that you would have a performance review, because that is when you're going to be able to sit down together and be like, Hey, how am I doing? And that's when you can also be like, I think I'm doing great. And you should pay me more. Um, I haven't um, done that. I didn't do that. And now it's weird. So I've tried to do it like once or twice. I haven't asked for a raise because I... I don't know. I probably just should. I don't know. But I haven't had any of like those sit down meetings. And then I am like the typical I'm just so bad at 
like one, my, my one year mark, I was pregnant and about to have a baby. So I was like, you probably shouldn't ask for a raise and then go on maternity leave. And then the next bout, what happened? Oh, and then coronavirus happened and our office took like a huge pay cut. And I know that I shouldn't be thinking about like that I should be looking out for myself, but I'm really bad at doing that. I'll just be honest. Like I am really bad at doing that. And it's a private practice. So it's just me and her. So asking the person that you directly report to and work with all day is like really hard because you don't want things to be awkward. So one day I'm waiting to now accumulate, um, I am looking at like what my revenue is and I'm keeping track of how much money I'm making for the practice so that I can kind of build a portfolio and say, have numbers to go in with. So that was something that someone recommended um, me to do so that I could go into the conversation when I do have it and say like, look, this is how much money I'm bringing in. Here's kind of like an average of how much I'm bringing in an hour. I would like this and see what happens. But that is essentially that answer. If you have built in meetings with your person, then that would be much more natural. Also, I worked so part time. Um, I don't know, that's but that's just me making excuses, because I definitely could have sat down and had a conversation at some point in the last two and a half years. I've been like, do you want to pay me more? Um, but I haven't because I'm probably, I'm not a pushover in a lot of things, but in this, I definitely am. I'm really uncomfortable talking about all of that um, or like asking for more money and all of that. I have um, a question in text too, if you, if you have time for it. Joe texted a question. Now I have to open my texting app. This You're right a, here. Yeah, why don't you? Yeah. Oh. What's your favorite, uh, who's your favorite Bake Off contestant? Yours and everybody in the chat. Joe would like to know everyone's favorite Bake Off contestant. If you would please enter your responses into the chat. I'm, I'm team Mark we C. We would appreciate Mark you. Joe is team Mark C. I Mark, am- It's Mark A, but it's spelled with a C. Oh, Mark with a C. Um, I'm team Ermine. Is that how you say her name? I after so. last yes. week, like I am hardcore team Ermine after she got real sassy and was just like, I don't care what any of you think. This is great British Bake Off in case I didn't mention that. Um, I'm hardcore team Armin because yeah. that woman is just, she was like, I don't care what you think. I'm going to do something weird. I'm going to put salmon in my bread mm -hmm. and bake it. And it's going to be freaking delicious. And then it was <laughs> like, if it's bad, it's bad. Like whatever. I was like, Oh my gosh, I love you. Um, all right. I'm going to scroll down just a wee few um, so that I can kind of get to a bunch. I'm sorry if I don't get to your question guys. Um, let me see. All right, let's find something. Hello, Lucas. Um, Michelle. My hair looks pretty. Michelle Stanley said so my hair looks pretty. Thank you. <laughs> um, I just finished, switched over from filling out my applications and getting transcripts though in applying for a nursing license. Yeah, that's the absolute worst. Um, let me see. Victor, Victor said, what kind of things should we be asking our nurses and doctors before taking the COVID vaccine? Um, I think, I don't know. I feel like it's too early. Like, I think there's going to be a lot of talk about it when it happens, but I don't think places are offering it yet unless you're in a clinic. I mean, they were not offering it unless you're in a clinical trial. And if you're in a clinical trial, you would hope like I would probably want to make sure that you were of like you were healthy going into it. You're not immunocompromised. Um, you know, you don't have um, really anything that would exclude you from any other vaccine. Um, but other than that, I mean, they're all in testing right now. So we don't really even know, but those are, I would just do the normal vaccine, you know, like, are you immune competent? Are you otherwise healthy? Have you tolerated other vaccinations? Well, okay. Then, you know, go for it, but we're not there yet at all. Um, Brittany said, won't be at my one year mark until January, but I feel like my unit isn't for me. Friend, I knew like eight weeks into my, I knew like three days into my first nursing job that that unit was not for me. I was like, oh no. Um, I had like the most traumatic first day like ever. I probably even knew like day one. So I worked on a liver GI floor. No one asked for this, but you're all going to find out. I worked on, like I said, a med surge unit. And one thing that can happen when you're in liver failure, 
And so your platelets go way down. Your platelets are the things that like stop you from bleeding. So you have like no platelets and a uh, complication of the cirrhosis or your liver failure is your veins get like huge and swollen and they can rupture. Um, and so I had gone and I was like paired with this nurse and I go in to answer the call light. Sorry, this is probably like a really graphic story. I should have told you. So if you hate like graphic things, then just skip ahead for like 15, 30 seconds. Um, and this is why you should shadow in med search. Cause you see some things. So I'm like, I'm going to go answer this call light. This guy stands up out of his chair and starts just like bleeding, like all everywhere and like essentially just like stood up and then the whole world had to come and I was just like standing there like oh my gosh like I just pulled every cord and hit every button and um yeah that was my first day and I was like I don't want to work here but I had a year and a half left of my contract <laughs> so I feel you um so leave as soon as you can if you don't like it that's totally fine um my goal has been NICU um at the hospital I'm at so I can't just peace out um let me see. Oh, you said coworkers. So it's not even your unit. Oh yeah. People can be the worst too. Um, what do I do? Um, leave in January. Can you make it that far? Um, did you sign a contract? If you didn't sign a contract, then just leave. If it's within the same hospital, just be like in that interview, they'll be like, Oh, Hey, why'd you leave your unit? And you were like, you could just be like, I realized that population was not what I wanted to work with, but here's the skills that I gained over the last year. I learned how to do X, Y, and Z. I'm a really good prioritizer. I got comfortable with nursing in general. So now I want to work with little cute babies. There you go. Um, Kennedy said, hi, Liz, I just started nursing school this semester and found your page looking for tips on notes and, uh, fell in love with your channel. Oh, thanks friend. I'm not the type to watch vlogs, but yours I can binge. Oh, thanks. Um, let me see. Can a Gemini, Jimin, Yamin, um, I butchered that. I'm sorry. Can an FNP work in the hospital? Some do. It depends on where you live. Um, some hospitals are now, so insurance companies are now, in some places dictating where FNPs can work. And they're in some places they're saying no, in some places they're saying you can, but only on like at a hospitalist level. In some places it's totally up in the air and you can work wherever. Um, where I work, they're really not hired too much in the hospital anymore because the insurance companies were coming back and they were saying, what education do you have to back up your um, role at the moment working in the hospital? Cause FNPs usually don't do any inpatient training. And, um, you can't really, you're like, well, I got like kind of trained on my job. And they're like, well, your education doesn't really back that up. So then they don't pay for you. And so then you don't have a job anymore. Because if you aren't getting paid, like if you can't bill something to your name, then you're kind of useless <laughs> at your job, not in life. Um, so they're getting pulled out. It's kind of a weird transition. Acute care nurse practitioners are a newer thing. Um, so a lot of people are like, sort of in this weird spot where they're either grandfathered, like, they've been in their job, they've been an FNP working in the hospital forever and ever. Some a lot of people even work in the ICU with their FNP, and they've been doing it for a while. And now the insurance companies are saying these things. Uh, and they're having to go either back, um, if they're in a hospital that's affected by that, then they have to go back to a post master's program and get their acute care, or find a different job. And that's really hard. So that's not everyone. Some hospitals definitely still do hire FNPs inpatient. But look at what your local jobs are hiring for. And if you know you want to work in a hospital, in acute care, go for your acute care, because then you aren't going to run into that position. And I feel like it's just going to get more and more specialized. And honestly, like, this is an unpopular opinion, but I think, I don't think it's bad because I, um, you, we just don't get any education in that. You know what I mean? It's similar to emergency rooms. It's really hard because in most FNP programs, it's primary care. So you weren't trained in the emergency department. So unless you're going to work in the ER, in like the urgent side, you know how most ERs have like urgent and then like, <laughs> do you not know that like this ear infection is not life-threatening? Um, to work in the less hardcore side, that would be fine, but it's all just a mess. So if you can, that's kind of going back to like, if you kind of know what you want to end up as, that makes NP school so much easier because you can pick the exact niche that you want to end up in. Um, watching Alina said, watching you all fixing some egg rolls. That sounds delicious. Um, how Ella said, how do you balance work and family? Hmm. So I, 
am really lucky. I'm going mm, because I'm like, is YouTube, I balance like my work work and family really well, but I don't necessarily balance my YouTube work and ho like family very well. Um, and that is like half of more than half of my job. So it's kind of like weird because I don't have very good balance. I'm the first one to admit that. In terms of like working as a nurse practitioner, I only work 14 hours a week. I looked for a job that was going to be super part time so that I could be home with my kids while they're little um, and have time to do like YouTube stuff. So I work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday afternoons and every other Saturday, which gives me a good life balance because I am home two whole days with them. And then I'm able to do things like doctor's appointments and all of that. So if you can swing um, in whatever job you have one day off a week, like whether you're working for tens, if you're working full time, that's really helpful for days to go to the dentist or the doctor's office, because that's just, that's a huge like life balance type of thing. Um, and then I don't really, I really need to figure out a better balance for like my YouTube half of work because I don't do well there. I'm not going to look at Joe because he's probably nodding like crazy. I tend to like, I really do try to prioritize like the girls um, and like have my time with them. But then it definitely cuts into like hanging out with Joe and spending quality time with him. So I'm not very good at that. Sorry, Joe. Um, let me see. He's just remaining silent. <laughs> I'm focused. I'm doing some blessed right now said hey liz i'm in north carolina too i'm just gonna roll up my pants real quick you can't see but i'm in my sweatpants and i'm rolling them up to my knees because it's so hot <laughs> um oh this yeah, is a good look no you don't have to turn the air on it's the light i have a, a box light over here um that's making me sweat you when your like kneecaps are sweaty <laughs> that's happening to me right now <laughs> Um, hey Liz, I'm in North Carolina too, and this is blessed right now. This is my first semester of an ADN program, and it proves to be quite a challenge. I told you, like, it is not you, it is the program. Those ADN programs are incredibly competitive, very thorough, and hardcore, like just really, really hardcore. So you can do it, take it one day at a time. You can do this, you can do hard things just one day at a time. Um, you've already done so many hard things to get you to this point, so you can you can do this just one foot in front of the other. Um, Tanisha, can you be an FMP and work in the ER? Kind of like I talked about a couple of minutes ago. It depends. It depends on where you live. Go to the job postings for the ERs around you and see what they want. They might be fine with ERs. Rural ERs tend to be much more fine with it. Um, but you also have to just make sure you're practicing within your scope. That is so important. So look up your state's board of nursing. And in some states, the medical board. So North Carolina, you're actually dictated by the nursing board and the medical board. Um, they will say what you can do uh, under your license. And if they say you had to learn this in school um, versus just you have to be trained in it, then if you've never been trained in school, um, most FMP programs are not teaching you how to work in the ER, then technically, even if the hospital will hire you, in that state, if you were to be sued, they could say like, you have no, like you shouldn't be working in this setting. So cover your tail, consult with a lawyer if you can acquire access to one. I don't know where you acquire access to lawyers. So I don't have one. I really, that's a life goal though, to just be like, I'm gonna have my lawyer call you. Be like, hey, I have a lawyer. <laughs> like, there we go. We don't have any, so we're pretty well covered in my family in terms of like, so my dad's an accountant, Joe does computers. My sister's like in the art, like uh, in, like literature editor, like creative space. My mom's a nurse. Um, I'm obviously in healthcare. And um, the thing we don't have is a lawyer. So um, my sister is, uh, you know, if you're a lawyer and you would like to marry my sister, there we go. Just send me a message. We'll be fine. Um, let me see. So we'll do a couple more probably like two or three more questions. And I know I didn't get to all of them. And I am so sorry. Um, but I'm just sorry. Thank you for being here. Um, Dream Faith said, how did you get through the first couple weeks of Zoloft? I just started Prozac and my anxiety is much worse. Um, I was really cranky and miserable. And I complained on the internet a lot. And um, if I hadn't, um, yeah, it was, it was really hard. So I couldn't really take anything else because I'm breastfeeding. Um, otherwise, I probably would have asked for something, like at least tried hydroxyzine at bedtime. If you can try that, that would be great. You could ask your provider for it. Um, if not, something like just a little bit of something to help 
until I um, got to the point where it kicked in because it was really hard. I was really miserable. I felt like crawling out of my skin. Like I was really irritable. Like it was just really, really hard. It does get better. I found week two got a little bit better and now I'm week eight or nine and it's a lot better. So I am sorry. Just hang in there. If you can get hydroxyzine, um, a, like your hands on that though, that does, um, that did help or would help most people. A lot of my patients see a lot of benefit from it. Um, I'm sorry. I hope you feel better soon. Um, <laughs> you guys are supporting my creamer choices and, um, I appreciate you. Let me see. People think you should do a live, Joe. <laughs> um, <laughs> plus right now, some of you guys, I think I drink entirely too much creamer. I'm glad. I'm glad it's just not me. Um, do I have, blessed right now said, do I have any advice for care planning and nursing school? Just get through it, guys. You are never going to do that in real life. So literally just get through it. There's, I think, care plan books that you can buy. There's probably websites. Just do whatever you need to do to get through and don't stress about it because you will never do that in real life. So this isn't something that like, oh, I don't know how to make a care plan. I'm going to be a bad nurse. No, um, you don't use them in real life. So don't even worry about it. Like obviously worry about it enough to get the grade and then leave. There's, um, I know there's a couple websites that have them. There's like a book I saw on Amazon one time that was like for care plans. I just, um, yeah, fluffed my way through that. <laughs> Um, Anybody answered my question for the update update. Can anybody respond to that? Um, let me see. I'll scroll down and find that. Joe wants to know if you responded to any of his Bake Off questions. David Ramirez. Um, oh, that's hard. <laughs> he had a physio test today that didn't go well. I hope the next one goes better. It's so hard with tests that don't go. I, ugh, that is just hard. Um, Abigail said my parents were repairing a window this weekend and my dad had to buy another tool to finish it. He might not ever use it again, but the window is good. And it reminded me of Joe. It's my life. We're going to have a whole wood shop soon. Um, let me see. Nathan said, how much do you know about EMP? So emergency nurse practitioner fellowship versus just getting the certificate through school. I mean, any kind of fellowship sounds great. Does it give you a certificate? So what you would, I guess it would depend on your board of nursing. Do they want you to just have had a fellowship? Like would the fellowship count towards your education or do you need the certification to then take it? Could you take the certification test after doing this fellowship? Because if you can take a certification test and get your fellowship, that would be amazing because I truly think that everyone should have a fellowship. Like I would have loved that. I feel like my job was kind of like a fellowship just with how I was able to really easily communicate with the woman I work with and she was easy to collaborate with. Um, but I think everyone should have a fellowship after NP school. It's just like way too, it's just so much more helpful. Yes, both end in a certificate. You can only get into a fellowship if you work in the ER as an RN and that's what I'm doing. I would totally do the fellowship then. That's going to give you... Um, so much more experience. I don't know anything about it. Um, <laughs> that's just me <laughs> assuming. Um, let me see. Um, but that's, if you can do a specialty or if you can do a fellowship, definitely do a fellowship. Um, Martha, is there a Martha? That was a couple seasons ago and there were two, I think. No, there's just a Martha. That's an answer to Joe's question of who's your favorite Great British Bake Off show. A lot of people Sorry. must not watch Great British Bake Off because there's only one answer and it's Martha. No, I'm just missing out. But Martha Joe says you're great. missing out. A few seasons ago, she was great. Martha was great. I remember Martha well. Um, tips for um, Bethany said tips for staying up to date with practice guidelines while waiting for a job, um, even after getting a job. Um, sorry, I was reading something else. Um, podcasts. I have a, I have a list on my Instagram under a highlight of my favorite medical ones. I have a YouTube video from last year that had my, up uh, my favorite ones. I'm going to have one coming out in the next month or two about my updated favorite ones, but that is how I stay up to date with almost everything, um, is podcast, medic podcast, American family physician, the curbsiders is 
amazing. If you work in family medicine, the Cribsiders is their new spinoff one for pediatrics. Charting pediatrics is a great one. Um, primary care R8, like RAP is a great one. Um, oh gosh, there's a lot of, there's some really, really, really good ones out there. Um, and I, that's the easiest way. You can listen them into the car. You can listen to them when you're doing like whatever around your house, but those are the best. Um, let me see. Okay. All right, guys. I, <laughs> Sophia says, please do a live Joe. There you go. Maybe Joe will be in my next one. You can come with your questions really for Joe. We'll see. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to head um, off for the evening and go chug my coffee and go ride my bike and do the thing. And um, hi, Sid Beer. I'm good. How are you? Um, yeah. Thanks for hanging out tonight, guys. These are always fun. I'll probably do another one in like... If I don't have a video next week, I'll do another one next week. And then if I do find the energy to make a video next week, then it'll be the week after. So just if you um, like with this one, like if you hit your notification thing, it should scream at you probably about a bajillion times um, if I go live. Um, so thanks for hanging out with me tonight, friends. And I hope you have a lovely, lovely evening. Kendall, I can work on that. They are stressful and that's about a care plan and they're just insane. Um, have a good night, guys. Thanks for being here. And I'll try to convince Joe that he should be on a live. I'll just have to go find some like beer that he really likes and like give him four. And they'll come on. Actually, it would be useless because he just giggles a lot when that happens. He would just be like over here, like, <laughs> yeah, disappointing. Yeah. Fun for me, but. All right, guys. Bye.